Hello everyone and welcome to A Slice of My Life. This might not make any sense to you, but trust me, this video is all about the CRKT Koti Day, or basically my review about it, but you see it here in its completely disassembled form. I don't think there are any other videos out there on YouTube that actually show you how this whole field strip version 2 or Gen 2 field strip thing looks like, but here it is. And the whole backstory is that <laughs> I brought this out on one of the beach cleanup sessions and basically I was putting it to use, you know, uh, digging up stuff from the sand, cutting straws, cutting strings, just whatever I needed to do when I was at the beach cleanup session. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any footage of myself using this knife. But you know, the focus there was really to clean up the beach. So it would be a little bit strange if I were to set a camera up and then start getting like B-roll footage of myself cutting stuff with this knife and then picking up the camera and moving on. I do, however, have some pictures that I'll be probably flashing on the screen or something like that. But I wanted to say that since I brought this guy with me, and I'm going to say that I don't think this is actually made for like use at the beach because yeah, this is D2 steel. But after using it and leaving it in my pocket because you know, it's salt water and things like that. Basically, this got really rusted and I've cleaned it up. I think I've done quite a good job cleaning it up so far. It's not the best in terms of cleaning it up. It's not perfect. You could see a little bit of a, you know, like a rust spot here or whatever's left over of that thing right there. Uh, yeah, so I think I cleaned it up pretty good, but, you know, um, not perfectly. In that whole process, I disassembled everything and I'm going to reassemble everything now. And I thought it would be a great way to kind of explain to you guys the inner workings of the field strip Gen 2 thing here on the Koti Day as I'm going to reassemble everything. And only after I'm done reassembling everything, then I will give you guys my verdict, my review on the CRKT Koti Day. But I gotta say, I'm very impressed with it so far, but I don't know how it's gonna be after I reassemble it, how's the blade centering gonna be like? How's the action gonna be like? Things like that. First thing I'm gonna talk about is the bearings on the blade. Now this actually has bearings, you guys can see, but from my understanding, you are not able to actually remove these bearings because there's a shim in there and it looks like it is kind of like hammered in here. So there's a little bit of a flange in there that's holding the bearings in place. So this is on both sides. Now, this thing feels a little bit gritty, I have to say, but uh, you know, it's not rusted, which is quite surprising to me. I've used glass cleaner on this. I've done a whole bunch of cleaning and yeah, so this is this is it guys. I honestly don't know how it's going to be after another long period of time, but so far, so good. Bearings are still intact. Bearings are not rusted at all. So yeah, that's one thing I want to point out. All these parts are here and you'll see that there's a black portion here, which is basically the mat. And this is just a you know, like a mouse pad kind of thing, but I flipped it over because it's a bit grippy on this side and it gives a better texture. And I've got this kitchen towel here because all the parts here are all in black. So I needed a white background for contrast. And uh, I've got a new companion today. This is the other teacup cat that Samson gave to me. You will need a T6 Torx screwdriver as well as a T8 Torx screwdriver. The next thing that I have on hand is a bottle of KPL lube. There we go. So KPL, I'm actually using this for this uh, reassembly. Now, the first thing that you want to do is work on the lock side scale first because this part doesn't have the field strip, uh, I guess that switch, if that's the right word. But yeah, this is what the scale looks like. Okay, so it's just black aluminum. Uh, it's a bit worn out already. It's got a few scuffs here and there because I've been using it. And on the inside, you have some grooves here. Now, the key point, but the key thing to note is that this actually has two very small o-rings and these o-rings actually sit here along where you would insert the pivot screw and this on the back here another o-ring it's exactly the same size but this goes in here now next you want to grab the lock side liner all right this is where the liner lock is and i didn't remove this stop pin so this is yeah it's just there and then we're going to hold that there and you'll notice that there are some, uh, what do you call it, D cuts on both of these slots. And so they correspond with your pivot pin and this other standoff on the back. So the wider one, sorry, I had to adjust the lights, but yeah, uh, here is these two uh, pivot pins or standoffs. Well, I'm going to say that this one is a pivot pin. So you can see the cut right there that will correspond with these two cuts here. And so the wider one is going to go to the back. Right, so we're just going to align this according to that and it just sit in right there. And this will take 
one of these okay so don't get confused now you'll see the widest or the biggest fattest screw i should say this one is a torx t8 screw this one is definitely for the pivot then the next smallest the one that's one step down this is the one that's going to go into this particular standoff here and this one is a t6 sized screw so yep get your t6 driver and screw it back on and tighten it up there we go next thing is we're going to work on this pivot screw here or the pivot pin so grab this corresponding one here and line that slot up or that cut up and it should sit in like that then we're going to get the largest screw here largest slash widest screw and this one is a torx t8 so we're going to get our t8 torx screwdriver or bit driver and we're going to tighten that down till it is nice and snug uh yeah guys by the way the loctite you saw there was not applied by me that was stock and next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the backspacer on this thing and this backspacer actually uses these two thin long torx t6 screws so yeah the backspacer lines up like this here on the back standoff and you got to make sure that the screw slots line up nicely here on the backspacer and we will be using the long t6 screws and we're gonna just screw it in yep i didn't tighten it down all the way because there are going to be two screws for this particular part and now once i have both in relatively snug then i will start tightening them down and yeah with that we are basically done with the lock side scale with the exception of the pocket clip that i have not yet installed but yeah um that's it so we're going to set this part aside and then we are going to start working on the show side scale so the show side scale now is a lot more intricate internally all right so you got a lot more grooves and cuts and things like that that's actually where all of the magic happens you'll need this part here and this is your button or your slider or your switch this is how you actually actuate the field strip gen 2 thing thing system <laughs> on your crkt Cotti day sorry guys i'm adjusting the light again uh i i don't know what's happening with my lights but yep please <laughs> accept my apologies so anyway this piece right so when you flip it over it actually has a marking of a number one i don't know what significance that marking has but mine actually has these like what looks to be a dremeled off section here I, I don't know what this is about but i didn't dremel that off so anyway looking at the kind of groove here or the slot here and then matching it up with this, you could tell easily that it's supposed to go in like that. And on the flip side, it looked like this, right? So what you want to do is you want to make sure that it is not in this position. You want to kind of make sure that it's in the original, aka locked position, all right? So this is the locked position and you want to leave it there. Now you could put it down flat, but you have to know and understand that this is actually raised. So when you put it on a flat surface, it's going to pop up, right? So generally I don't think i'll be doing that i'll just be holding it up like that now the next piece that we want to grab is this piece over here now this is the second part of the field strip mechanism and this is that hook that corresponds with this groove right here so you guys can see that this of course has another long groove here like that so think of it as a z or z shaped kind of groove and this will go in this way with this portion corresponding to that long slot just like that now you want to make sure that these parts line up see this circular slot here that's important so it has to line up and it'll be completely flush just like that and then the next piece of the puzzle is this spring here oh sorry this spring here this is a really thin wire type of spring uh, i don't know what's the right exact terminology or the correct term for the spring this is the orientation it's going to be in all right this loop part here is going to correspond with that slot right there so when you line that up that's the first thing but you got to make sure that this portion here is above this slot and it'll sit inside of this groove so it has to be just like that see this orientation guys so that's a loop it goes into that groove it curves up and it rests on that circular shape right that semicircle shape right there so this is the field strip pieces there's three all together excluding the scale and that's how it should be sitting so yeah you can see that there's only three screws left and then the pocket clip and the corresponding screw but yeah we basically got everything in place now we're gonna get this 
liner here basically kind of like a cover i guess and then you want to make sure that all these nubs here these raised nubs this one this one or these two here and then one more right here all these four nubs correspond to these slots respectively and it will just all sit like magic like that and if you're not sure if it's sitting correctly then you just gotta look at it from the side and make sure that it's completely flush so as you can tell everything is flush it's sitting nicely then what you're gonna do is you're going to have one finger at least pressing down or applying downward pressure on this uh, liner i'm just gonna call it liner then we flip it around and you'll see that there are one two three screw slots or screw ports and then these really short t6 screws are gonna go into each of these slots so and i'll just tighten it not all the way but just like a little bit snug then i'll move on to the next slot and tighten it down till it is snug and the last slot here which is also another groove here see that it's corresponding so yes guys this is a reversible pocket clip and that means that to a certain extent yep it is lefty friendly but yeah i mean you can't relocate the switch right so whether it really is lefty friendly is kind of debatable right but now that i've got all these torx screws in relatively snug i'm going to now tighten them one by one just to make sure everything's nice and tight and that looks to be good now we are going to test the feel strip lock and see if it moves as intended yep it's supposed to spring back when you try and push it up and then when you push it forward it will stay in position if you pull it back it should kind of snap into place yep like that so let me try and show that to you guys uh maybe if i do it this way do you guys think you could see it wait there so it's supposed to snap into that position right there so this is the locked position now showing this to you guys on the back here you see that in the locked position you'll see that c-shaped thing is kind of sticking out but once I start to shift the lock, right? Let me just try and do this. I haven't done this in a reverse fashion before. See how it's moved away now? Because yeah, the lock is in the unlocked position. So as I snap it back, this is going to be a bit more obvious to you guys. As I snap it back, see that? That comes out. So hopefully that gives you a better idea on how this grips onto the slot here on the pivot pin. Oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to mention. Yeah, the same thing happens on the back as well. So yeah, that's why this particular standoff also has this lip up here, right? So let me just kind of show it to you guys. I'm going to unlock this thing again. There we go. So that disappeared and now I'm going to lock it back. There we go. That comes back out. So yeah, that's two points of security, right? One on the pivot and one on the back um, standoff here. So now I'm going to reassemble everything. And uh, well, you know what? I'll just, I'll just install the pocket clip just for good measure, guys. Okay, pocket clip now installed back in place. That was rather straightforward. I'm going to put some lube on this and I'm just going to lube this area up a little bit, lube this area up a little bit. Then I'm going to put a little bit of lube on the bearings and inside the pivot pin slot. Let's just uh, put this back together first and see how that goes. So yeah, just make sure that this whole thing sits nicely and doesn't look like it's sitting nicely right now because this part is weird. Uh, something's not right. But it looks like the pivot pin isn't straight. Well, okay. I'm glad I checked the orientation there. Going to try and rectify this a little bit. But it definitely feels like it's completely straight though. I don't know. I don't know. Let's just see how this goes. And there we go. It looks like it's now seated correctly. And a good way to gauge whether or not this is seated correctly is basically to take Q from the backspacer here especially between the show side and the backspacer so it should kind of look like this and then it should be parallel all the way across and then we should be able to lock it and it won't be able to be split apart that's how it's supposed to work so just opening it up again yep that simple so now i'm going to start to add my lube and you know uh, a bit of lube just a little bit of lube goes a long way shout out to kpl i've been using kpl for a really long time now and it's my go-to knife lube just a couple dots here and i'm going to put one dot on the pivot pin just for good measure and then the bearings here maybe i'll just put a bit like that inside this slot and kind of spread it around now just put the blade 
onto this right here. Oh wait, I forgot about the stop pin area. So yeah, the stop pin channel or the cut out, I'm gonna add a bit, just a drop here, spread it out a little bit, spread it around. On the other side as well. All right, so I've basically tried to induce a bit of a, a lock or a hold by making the liner interface with the lock bar area of the blade. Couple of drops on this side of the bearing. And then a couple of drops around this area that bearing track on the show side scale. And then now we're gonna put the show side scale onto this whole thing and make sure that everything looks like it's lining up correctly and the moment of truth. Yep, so now it's locked in place, see? Now I'm gonna test out the knife. Okay, it looks like it's closing right. Um, yep, deploying is okay as well. The one thing I have to mention about the Cotidae is that at least for my piece, the detent is really soft when you're closing the knife. So, it's really soft. But the action, when deploying, is good. It's a really smooth action. But now I have to say that the bearings are feeling pretty gritty. Pretty gritty. <laughs> pretty gritty. Yeah. Maybe I'll just need like a break-in period again. I don't know because I cleaned it up and there's no lubrication anymore. But the mic's off to the left. So I'm going to just put this as close as I can to the mic. Can you guys hear that? But all in all, I think this is okay. So now, I'm going to try to open it up again, even with the blade in its closed position. Yep, that works. And then put this back and lock it. That works as well. Once more, with the blade deployed. Yep. So that's a field strip technology working very well. Yep, it's locked again. Now let's check out the blade centering. And blade centering looks pretty good. It's not the best. It's leaning a little bit towards the lock side. It's just very slightly to the lock side. But up here, everything looks good. Yep. Just apart from the tip right there. But this is this is good so far. So uh yeah, that is the reassembly of the CRKT Koti Day, everyone, from the completely disassembled state. So I've reassembled everything. I'm going to now move all of this aside. And so there's something that I need to get out of the way. So before we move forward, I'm going to read this off the CRKT website. And I think this is in all fairness because I want to be as fair as possible, right? Oh, and I just wanted to say as well, this is actually designed by the legendary Jesper Voxnes. I'm quite a fan of Vox's designs. I like his design aesthetics and all the nuances there. So yeah, it's a very trademark Vox kind of design uh, aesthetic I should say like a design styling right but yeah I was saying that I was going to read this off the CRKT website and it says here made with shop work in mind the Koti Day everyday carry folding knife is a compact stout mechanics knife equipped to handle dirty jobs so that's the thing this was actually built or actually designed and created with shop work in mind and I took this out to the beach so you know it's a it's a case of a wrong scenario, or wrong situation, but I put it to work anyway. So I got to say, uh, I don't work in a workshop, but this thing as a beach companion was really awesome. And apart from me just taking it to the beach, I actually EDC this guy for a good two and a half weeks. So yeah, you could see some scratches here on the, uh, just along the edge of the blade. I have to say, okay, I'm going to remove this ring because this is the ring that Emma got me and uh, I don't want to scuff it up too much. So yeah, ergonomics. Ergonomics is really quite good. It's very reminiscent, in my opinion, of the Pila, the original Pila, where in its deployed mode, you actually have this whole area here. This very generous area here that is kind of like a finger choil, like a forward finger choil, as well as a, I guess, a sharpening choil. I, I don't know, but this is really, really comfortable, guys. The fact that this area here is recessed as well. It has a little bump here. This actually fits my fourth finger perfectly. And so this is really, really good. 
and even if I don't want to put my thumb up here, just a standard grip is very comfortable as well. The one thing I have to say that you know uh, will vary depending on the size of your hands is this flipper tab here that's out of the bottom. So if you are holding it kind of low like that, then yeah, definitely this will be biting into your index finger. But if you hold it just right, it's not going to do that. It'll be perfect. And uh, you could also hold it this way behind the finger choil. And then have your thumb up here and get into all those fine detail work with your thumb up there. But I have to say that there is no jimping up here. It's really smooth. So yeah, um, you know, nothing much to stop your thumb from slipping up and down except for the scale itself. And the scales actually feature this pretty rough kind of texture. It's like a chalkboard that you kind of sprayed over with a layer of spray paint. I think that's the best way I can describe it guys. So yeah, the scales feature this rough texturing here. Let me get this straight. It's not rough, like harmful to your skin, but there is some kind of a grip to it. It feels like very worn out sandpaper and it's quite comfortable. And that itself actually offers you a bit of grip since there is no jimping present on the spine of the blade. But this area here, if you have your thumb resting up there, this is going to be comfortable for you. Yeah, so ergonomics of this is actually on point. And at the same time, I'll just put all the specs of this on screen because I don't want to waste your time talking through all of that. But yeah, uh, it, it's it's hefty enough, it's wide enough, and it's very comfortable. So for an EDC knife, I would say that yeah, this is actually quite a compelling choice. I was honestly surprised. And uh, uh, hey, the grittiness is kind of getting better right now. It's not as gritty as when I first installed it. Well, 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 what can I say? Yeah. The only downside I would say is that because this is actually, you know, like black coated aluminium, then yeah, you can see that all the scuffs and all that come out. So this is definitely going to wear out, you know, with time and it'll expose the raw aluminium color. So if you really want to maintain this full black, then, you know, uh, that is going to be a bit difficult because yeah, you can see that this area kind of has worn out after like three weeks of usage, like light usage and then bringing this to the beach. Next is the pocket clip. Now this isn't a true full deep carry pocket clip even though it does classify as a deep carry pocket clip so you can see that it is also reversible but it is only available in the tip up carry. The field strip technology thing, this actually works really well. You guys saw it's really easy for you to just kind of move this, push it forward and then you can remove the top scale, do your cleaning and stuff like that and then just put it back. And with some practice, you don't even have to check over there and see it's now back secure all over again. So that's really convenient. But that also means that this switch here is available only on one side of the knife. You're not able to swap it over to the other side. But, you know, just, just, just pointing it out. But if you hold it in your left hand, there is no way you're going to unlock this thing because of the way you're gripping it. Look, in order for you to unlock it, you have to push it upwards and then push it forward. So the part that I find that requires a bit more effort to unlock is not actually the lifting up part. It is the part where you push it forward. So lifting up is easy by itself, but it's the pushing forward part. That's the part that requires a bit more effort and I don't think it'll ever happen if you hold this in your left hand. I'm just saying, right? Because when you hold it in the right hand, yeah, it's just... At the most, it's the tip of your middle finger or index finger going to be touching on that particular lock switch over here. But once you hold it in your left hand, basically it is completely covered. And with the way you grip on it, you're actually kind of, well, it feels like I'm actually pushing downwards on this thing to make this lock even more secure here. So it's not a point of concern for any of my lefty friends out there who are wondering whether or not this could be a possible contender to be included into your collection you know what i mean of course it is a liner lock so yeah the lock is only on one side but all in all i must say uh, i'm actually quite impressed with this guy i picked this up over at field essentials and uh yeah it was quite fun because when i visited i managed to bump into wesley there and of course shout out to ming hawk for being so hospitable over at field essentials i think i picked it up sometime in february i think yeah, I think it was in February. So it's been a couple of months since I got this guy. But yeah, like I mentioned, you know, I EDC'd this guy for about three weeks and brought this to the beach. But I got this in February and I got it for 165 Singapore dollars. But right now, Feel Essentials actually selling this at $123.90. That's Singapore dollars, by the way. If you are in the US, this should be retailing at about the 80 or 90 US dollar range. 
which is quite compelling because it's got this field strip technology here, anodized black aluminum handles, even the back spacer, I believe it's also aluminum. I may be wrong on that, but you know. Then you've got reversible pocket clip. And uh, yeah, very simple, straightforward disassembly, reassembly made of D2 steel. If you're planning to use this in a workshop or if you're going to use this as an EDC knife, I will say D2 steel is completely a viable option. Uh, if you're bringing it out to the beach, then yeah, you guys saw it is not as corrosion resistant. Then again, then again, to be fair, Singapore is a tropical island. It's really humid plus salty water from the beach is just a recipe for disaster for metals in general. Uh, by the way, I cleaned it up with some flits also, also <laughs> procured from Field Essentials. So yeah, I mean, this is not a sponsored video, but you know, Ming Hock is a really awesome guy all around. And on top of that, he is a true EDC head as well. A really, really active member of the community. So shout out to you, Ming Hock. Keep up the good work. And once again, everyone, this is the CRKT Koti Day. That's my kind of reassembly, like a full reassembly, then showing you the features of this thing and a quick overview of what I think about it overall. I think it's a pretty compelling purchase. Now, just to give you guys a quick size comparison, I did not bring the stubby out in the previous videos. So here we go. This is the Koti Day next to a stubby. And here is a kind of average size lighter. So you could see it is not much larger than a lighter. A penguin, an elementum, as well as a para 3. Of course, I'm going to deploy all of this, but hopefully this gives you a good idea first in its closed position because this is how it's going to sit in your pocket. And let me arrange everything from the back. Just take the measurement from the back of the knife. There we go. That's much better. So yeah, out of all the knives on the table, you can see that the Cote Day is the shortest out of all. So there we go. Out of all of the knives on the table so far. Oh my god, I gotta clean this up. Anyway, out of all the knives on the table so far, you could tell that the Cote Day is the most compact, both in terms of the scale as well as the blade length. So yeah, it's gonna sit very comfortably in your pocket. But you could tell it is by no means a very small knife. It is wide enough, thick enough, chunky enough to feel very comfortable in your hand. Uh, there's one thing that I didn't show you guys. It was the Koti Day in a reverse grip. Let me just quickly show that to you guys. Yeah, Koti Day in a reverse grip looks just like this. So nothing sticking out here. But I'm still not losing on any grip at all whatsoever. See that? Yep. I'm sorry guys, hold up. I'm going to have to interrupt you at this point because I have a little bit more information about the Koti Day that I want to share. Right now, it is exactly a week since I recorded that video. Yes, I know I'm editing the video halfway, but I wanted to share some updates and those are good updates. I realized that there were a couple of things that I did not address in that video and the first thing that I did not address is lock rock or any kind of blade play. And I got to say that there is absolutely no blade play no lock rock, no matter how many times I've opened or closed this thing. It's really interesting because I, you know, was skeptical initially. And I have to say that this is something that I actually had in mind, but I did not get it alleviated until I visited Ming Hock over at Field Essentials, where I actually got to try this firsthand. So this is the kind of knife that basically for myself, I think that if I did not get the chance to first experience it or hold it and try it out, I might not have purchased it. I honestly don't know if I would be able to justify purchasing this online without actually knowing how it feels or especially without actually trying out that field strip technology here. So yeah, I actually tried it in person and the moment I tried it out, took it apart, put it back and I realized that there was no blade play and no lock rock. That really, really changed my opinion on this and that was one of the key factors to why I purchased this knife. So yeah, I wanted to share that with you guys to let you know that you could easily disassemble this thing. So yes, uh, oh sorry, a little bit of pocket lint. Like I said, it's been a week. But yeah, um, just put this thing back even in the deployed position, lock it in place and yep, the scales are on tight. No blade play, no lock rock. This is actually quite amazing in my opinion. Maybe, just maybe, right? It could be the work of the O-ring just underneath the pivot pin. I don't know, but this is, yeah, one of the very, very important points and I don't know why I forgot about telling it to you guys. I think it's because like, the moment this kind of got alleviated from my mind, the moment I got the answer to this, it was a worry point that was completely taken off my mind. So yeah, that, that possibly could be it. Another thing that I did not share is, especially for G-Man, uh, yeah, you could still deploy it upside down. And yeah, guys, I use my middle finger for that. 
Let me try and see if I can use my fourth finger. There we go. Uh, let's see if I can do it with my pinky. Uh, I don't know if I have enough strength in the pinky, but let's just wait. I gotta make sure that I hold the knife because I don't want this thing to be flying everywhere. Wait, let me get a good grip, guys. I'm sorry. Mm. Not enough strength, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry to disappoint all of you. But once again, with the middle finger, it is really easy. It's like just snapping your fingers together. The next thing I gotta say is that over the course of this week, I realized that the grittiness in the bearing is completely gone. I think, you know, it's like kind of re-breaking it in again. I realized that it's completely smooth now. Like, okay, so this time the mic is right here in the camera. Uh, super soft. Yeah, you hear the bearings moving, but it's not that gritty kind of sound and it's definitely not a gritty feeling whatsoever it just feels completely smooth so smooth that right now uh i could well i could wobble it shut i, I can wiggle it shut not wobble it wiggle it shut so it's not the most drop shuttiest thing i mean you can't expect drop shutty because this thing is a field strip technology knife but yeah at least you know you could wiggle it shut like that now uh, and yeah, still, like I said, no no blade play, no lock rock. And uh, for some reason, for some reason, the centering kind of fixed itself. I'm, let me see if I can kind of show you guys that on camera. I, I don't know. Yeah, but the blade centering fixed itself. Okay, that's it, everyone. I just wanted to update you guys on this because I felt that they were really, really important points that should be added to this video. I know it's been a long video so far and this video is going to be like, what? Half an hour long? <sighs> yeah, but, but, yeah. That's it for me. Back to the main video. That is it, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking all the way throughout and sharing in this slice of my life. I hope that you enjoyed this content. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, I hope that you will consider subscribing. But if I did not manage to earn your sub today, that's okay. I will continue working on my content and hopefully I will earn that sub one day. A great way also to support the channel is over on Patreon. I'll put a link up here to that in case you want to go check it out. We do have Patreon exclusive content as well as Patreon exclusive giveaways from time to time. So if you do become a patron of mine, Thank you so much in advance, it means a lot to me. One more close look at the CRKT Koti Day, everyone. Designed by the legendary Jesper Voxnes. And I will catch all of you in the next slice. Bye.